Welcome curious minds to another captivating journey through history. In this We Are Saintly series, we delve into the profound wisdom of a man whose teachings have withstood the test of time, a luminary scholar and saint whose name echoes through the ages, Saint Irenaeus. In this episode, we'll uncover the remarkable life and enduring legacy of Saint Irenaeus, a towering figure in early Christianity whose insights continue to shape our understanding of faith, theology, and spirituality. We'll journey back to the second century, a time of theological turmoil and diverse beliefs within the Christian community. It was against this backdrop that Saint Irenaeus emerged as a defender of Christianity, a beacon of clarity amidst the theological fog. But who was this remarkable man, and what drove him to become one of the most influential theologians of his era? Join us as we uncover the life story of Saint Irenaeus, from his humble beginnings to his role in combating heresies that threatened to tear the early church apart. Let's get started. What is Saint Irenaeus famous for? Saint Irenaeus, a man of the second century, devoted his life to upholding and advancing the principles of the Christian faith. He has been regarded as a cherished and revered figure throughout history thanks to his contributions to theology, his defense of the church against heresies, and his unflinching dedication to its unity. Saint Irenaeus played a crucial part in the early development of Christian theology while serving as the Bishop of Lyons in Gaul. He fought against a number of heresies, most notably Gnosticism, that endangered the fundamental principles of the religion. Irenaeus fervently argued for the preservation of the teachings handed down by the apostles themselves and underlined the significance of apostolic tradition and the unity of the church. His works and beliefs are still influential today and serve as the cornerstone for comprehending early Christianity. What is the famous saying of Saint Irenaeus? Along with his academic contributions, Saint Irenaeus gave the church profound words of wisdom that have endured throughout the ages. His most well-known quote captures the heart of his teachings and his abiding faith. A fully alive human being is the glory of God. The essence of Saint Irenaeus' theological perspective is encapsulated in these brief yet powerful statements. For him, the wholeness of one's existence as a human being is where one finds true life, plentiful and vibrant. It is a life that is driven by love, hope, and faith, a life that reflects God's likeness and the reason why people were made. The quote from Saint Irenaeus serves as a reminder that our ultimate goal is to embrace life in all of its fullness rather than simply to exist. It encourages us to understand that pursuing purity, becoming closer to God, and showing love and service to others are not just duties but also the means to a really abundant life. By embracing our distinctive identities, gifts, and callings, we turn into instruments of God's glory, illuminating the world with his light. Saint Irenaeus's comments encourage us to consider our own lives and the best methods to enjoy the richness of human existence. They exhort us to look for the splendor and depth that can be discovered in a life committed to God, a life driven by faith, and a life shared in communion with our fellow humans. Let us be motivated to live with a renewed sense of purpose, passion, and thankfulness as we reflect on Saint Irenaeus's wisdom and his exhortation to embrace the fullness of life. May we strive to become completely alive in every way, reflecting God's splendor and illuminating the world with his love and light. By doing this, we pay tribute to this extraordinary saint's legacy and carry on the everlasting path of faith paved by our forebears. What are two teachings of Saint Irenaeus? The teachings of Saint Irenaeus occupy a distinct place of wisdom and understanding within the theological treasure trove of the Christian religion. This extraordinary saint, who lived in the second century, left behind a rich legacy of teaching that still serve as a source of inspiration and direction for followers today. Let's examine two of Saint Irenaeus's most important teachings and illuminate their importance for our spiritual development. Christ's recapitulation of humanity, the idea of recapitulation, a comprehensive comprehension of God's purpose for the redemption and restoration of humanity, lies at the heart of Saint Irenaeus's theology. Irenaeus thought that God had revived and accomplished his original purpose for humanity through the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Christ restored and rejoined humanity with God by taking on human nature, mending the rift brought about by sin. Saint Irenaeus highlights the significance of Christ's function as the new Adam, who reverses the effects of Adam's sin in this teaching. Jesus provides humanity the chance to be made right with God, to be changed into the image of Christ, and to share in the divine life through his perfect obedience and sacrificial death. This deep message challenges us to live in contact with God, experiencing the fullness of his kindness and love, and to embrace the redemptive power of Christ. The concordance between the Bible and tradition, the coherence of scripture and tradition is another one of Saint Irenaeus's central ideas. Both of these revelations, in Irenaeus' opinion, are necessary for a thorough comprehension of the Christian faith. He viewed tradition as the living transmission of these teachings within the church, while scripture represented the recorded record of God's self-revelation and the apostles' teachings. The authority of both scripture and tradition was supported by Saint Irenaeus, who saw both as complementary and interconnected. 
He claimed that the transmission of apostolic teachings from one generation to the next protected the Church's continuity and unity. By securing the faithful transmission of the apostolic deposit of faith, Irenaeus stressed the significance of the Church's function as the custodian of truth. St. Irenaeus' teachings urge us to delve further into the breadth and depth of the Christian faith. Through the idea of recapitulation, we can experience the transforming power of Christ's redemption and discover hope and restoration in Him. We can also recognize the value of both sources in influencing our understanding of God's revelation by appreciating the concord between scripture and tradition. What is St. Irenaeus Theodicy? Theodicy is a profound and difficult subject that has engaged the minds of theologians throughout history. It is the theological examination of how an all-powerful and loving God can permit the presence of evil and suffering. St. Irenaeus, who also struggled with this important subject, provided an original viewpoint known as Ironian Theodicy. St. Irenaeus used a developmental approach to Theodicy as opposed to conventional Theodicies, which emphasize free choice or a higher good in an effort to balance God's benevolence and the existence of evil. He thought that there is a divine purpose for evil and suffering in the development and maturation of human spirit. Saint Irenaeus believed that although God made humans with flaws, they are also capable of development and change. Despite not being explicitly willed by God, the existence of evil and suffering in the world offers possibilities for moral and spiritual growth. We are encouraged to practice through the difficulties and troubles we experience. Learning about our church fathers and church history will deepen your faith so much. Prayer is also such an important aspect of growing in your faith. Meditating on the gospel for at least a few minutes a day can dramatically deepen your faith. Are you familiar with the gospel? I believe that you were brought to this video today for a reason. Let's take a moment to think about the gospel and what the religion of Christianity is all about. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that we all need a Savior because of this. Romans 3.23 Because of this, God sent His one and only Son to us to be the atonement for our sins. As it says in John 3.16, God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, in Malachi 3 6, God says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. He has always required a blood sacrifice for the atonement of sins. He says this in Leviticus 17 11, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. He also repeats this in the New Testament when he says in Hebrews 9.22, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why Jesus, God in the flesh, had to come into the world and live under the law, which are the Ten Commandments, to redeem those who were under the law. Have you obeyed the entire law of the Lord? Have you ever stolen anything, even if it was small? Have you ever lied? Have you ever not kept Sunday as a day of rest and worship of the Lord? Have you ever looked with lust at another person that you were not married to or done physical things with a person you were not married to? to. Have you ever desired something that your friend or neighbor had that didn't belong to you? To be honest, it's easy to break these laws because our nature is inclined to sin. The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. However, it says in 1 John 1-8 and 9, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a merciful and loving God we serve. Because God loves us so much, in Isaiah 53, 10, it says, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush Jesus, when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. He conquered sin and death, and because he rose from the dead, he promises to raise us from the dead after we die too. This is the glorious gospel. The next step after a person has received the gospel is to go to RCIA at your local Catholic church. You can search for the nearest church on Google and call them to see when the next classes start. If they don't start for some months, you can still meet with the director and get some books to read to tie you over before it starts. I will be praying for you about all of this. This is the road to eternal life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other videos about inspiring saints. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video. Make sure to check out the links below in the description so you can grab your We Are Saintly Catholic t-shirt and be a part of our We Are Saintly Catholic community by signing up for our email list and joining us on Patreon. I give you free saint printables each month, a free We Are Saintly shirt each year, shout outs, and more in Patreon as a special thank you for being a part of this amazing Catholic community. Are you considering taking a Catholic pilgrimage to honor Saint Irenaeus after learning about him today? I've traveled to lots of places, and I'm well versed in the things you may need along the way, so I've compiled a list of links in the description below where you can find cheap flights, car rentals, destination packages, and more. Save this video so you have those links handy and visit our blog to learn about more holy saints that will ignite your faith. 
I sincerely hope that learning about this Saint Ironius has brought you a sense of comfort and tranquility. If you found this video to be beneficial, please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel. Always remember to keep the faith and believe in the power of prayer. May God bless you and provide you with guidance on your journey. Until we meet again, take care of yourself, keep going to church, reading your Bible, praying your rosary, and sharing the gospel. I'm praying for you in all of this.